look, I was just, I was trying to assert dominance. I'm, I'm the king. I, I, I didn't necessarily expect you to lose your head about it. Oh, sorry, that was too soon. Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ladies, when it comes to Pal World, the game can be tough at points, but realistically, it is only as tough as you ever choose to make it, because like any good creature collection or survival game, if you put your time into the right places, you can make yourself significantly stronger than someone at the same point of technical progression who has spent less time on the important power-boosting things. So today we're going to talk about something relatively simple on the surface, but extremely important to understand, and something that I know a lot of people don't quite fully grasp yet with the game still being pretty fresh, which is how to make any pal in the game as strong as physically possible, and how to do it as quickly as you can too. That said, there are four main avenues to power for pals. The first and most obvious one is pure levels, pure experience. More levels means higher stats, and overleveling your enemies makes them easier. So the step one is going to be experience farm, of course. The second is stat increases through the statue of power, which you can purchase for different amounts and grades of pal souls. The third is the pal essence condenser, and I've seen a lot of people unlock this, look at it, and then just turn away and ignore it forever, but that's a mistake, especially if you want to genuinely make pals stronger long term. Then the third thing to consider is passive and active skills. When you capture a wild pal, they will have a random set of passive skills, some more set, some more completely random, and there is in fact actually a way in the game to sort of pick and choose the passives completely on a given pal of your choice. It just takes a bit of doing, quite a bit, honestly. First up then, we're going to go in a sort of reasonable order here, as in the way that we're going to be creating a perfect pal from the ground up. So for that, we need to start with passive skills. And this is the first true step in order to making the 100% perfect pal. When you find a pal in the wild, it will spawn with up to four random passive skills. Some of these affect the attack or defense stat. Some affect damage with different elemental types only. Some will affect the speed of a pal working in your base. And some will affect sanity or hunger loss too. Pretty much every stat that a pal has outside of its work suit abilities and partner skill can be boosted or nerfed through these passive skills. Well, I did mention earlier that pals in the wild spawn with any of these at random. Them. If you happen to find a pal with a particularly good passive skill, even if it isn't a pal that you want to actively use, you should keep it around. The main reason for this is passive skills can of course be passed down through breeding. Let's say for example you have a legendary pal, one of the four wild pals that spawn in the game with the legend passive skill, plus 20% attack, 20% defense, 15% movement speed. This is not so strong. The best individual skill in the game as far as combat goes at least. So let's say we put Necromus and Celery together to breed that legend skill down down, and suddenly you can create a technically speaking legendary King Paka, as it has a chance to get the passive skills from each parent. In this case, we got Legend and Diet Lover from Necromus, and Aggressive from Celery. With a completely random chance, we got the actual Musclehead passive skill, which is minus 50% work speed, but another 30% attack. So from the passive skills alone, this King Paka is gaining 60% attack, 10% defense, 15% speed, and has 15% lower hunger. This isn't even a perfect, perfect pal, but it's 3 out of 4 on the passive skills, and you can already see the difference here. I, of course, then wanted to take it a bit further, so I bred this King Paka with other King Paka to make more King Paka, and eventually we got something very beautiful, replacing that Diet Lover with Runner, a 20% movement speed boost. And later on in the process, after I'd already started boosting the really fast one, I got this 4 out of 4 perfect combat King Paka who had Legend, Musclehead, Ferocious, and Aggressive, which totals an 80% boost to the attack stat. As well, that is a combat-focused pal setup, but you can transfer passive skills like Artisan, for example that increase work speed by 50%, which is pretty huge, and then use that to make even your automated bases far more efficient than they currently are. There are, of course, a lot of easier ways to do this, though, than the way that I've done it, going through multiple sets of parents, and one that will again be relevant in a bit, so generally outside of the legend skill specifically, I just recommend breeding two of your favorite pal together a bunch of times the same species until you get a good set of passive skills. You want to swap the parents around and breed the new pair together if you get one good skill that you want to keep passing down, and then keep this up until you have the skills that you want, which should also net you an excess of your favorite pal anyways in bulk, which will become very relevant later regardless. On a sort of similar note, we should also talk about the actual active skills too, the actual move set of attacks that a pal has. Every pal has moves that they can learn, then moves that they can use, but they also have a chance of learning anything that either of their parents knows as well. Which is why this Kimpaka, far down the lineage, has Hydrojet. That's actually from the first Celeray way back at the beginning. You can use this to transfer down stronger moves to new pals too, or you can even just find skills 
skill fruits in the wild that can apply even stronger ones of these if you want some fancier moves going on as well. Secondly then, let's talk about the simplest yet least scalable power increase, which is levels. Overleveling an enemy will gain you a ton of power very early on, but of course there is a level cap in the game of 50, and as a result, you can't overlevel the true end game pals because there is a max level. That said, leveling is the fastest way to gain power earlier on, so it's still incredibly important to understand. When it comes to leveling, there is an exploit that we'll talk about that significantly speeds up the first 30 levels or so if you want to mess with glitches and bugs. The fastest legit method is still incredibly good and becomes the best way anyways to level past around that midpoint regardless. So if, if you want to make this faster, you can also mess with your world settings before loading in and even scale your experience gain up a ton if you want to just get it done quick. But whether you do that or not, the fastest proper method of actually gaining experience is the same. And it's sort of just capturing pals. That might be simplifying it a bit too much, but the basic concept is that when you capture a pal, you get a base amount of XP based on the pal's level. This doesn't scale exponentially very well on its own, but the game also gives you a large chunk of bonus experience for the first 10 times that you catch a species of pal. For example, I've caught more than 10 Celeray, so I no longer get the XP bonus from Celeray, but I do still get it from anything that I haven't caught 10 times, and you can see that represented by the number of ball symbols filled out after you catch a pal. For whatever reason, this first 10 time per species capture bonus seems to be the same whether you catch a level one pal or a level 50 pal, so weirdly enough, the best way to gain experience and levels quickly is actually to just run around catching lower level pals. There are at least 10 to 15 pal species that spawn under level 10, and way more that spawn from 10 to 20. So you can do this even early on without much difficulty, but it gets even faster the higher level you are and the better grade of pal spheres that you can make, because if you get good enough spheres, you can have a 100% capture rate on a completely undamaged wild pal if it's low enough level, and you can use that to just run around farming experience like crazy using this method, with again, the only condition being that once you caught a pal 10 times, that specific species won't give you the bonus anymore. As for the exploit that I mentioned then, it simply requires a specific small build in your base, off of any element elevated wall. You want to build a roof panel with nothing under it, then build stairs going down from the roof panel attached to the wall beside it. Then if you position yourself like this, you can aim a wall placement under the roof we just put up, and if you position it right in the middle, then create it, it will fail to actually properly create, which gives you the materials back for free, but gives you the experience that you would have gotten from creating the object properly. So you can just stand there pressing the build button repeatedly, gaining non-stop experience, and you can even automate this by doing it in a base with transport work suitability pals around in a storage chest right beside your setup, so they bring the materials to the chest actively as you spawn them on the floor with the failed build. Again, this one loses value around the midpoint of the game, but it is definitely the purely easiest way to get to that midpoint, which is also the point where you can start making pal spheres that will easily capture 100% the low level pals without combat for our initial strategy anyways. Third up today is a relatively simple one, and that is upgrading your pals at the Statue of Power. These exist in churches around the map, and of course you can place them in your own base too, if you you'd like to, and these serve two main purposes, increasing the catching power of your player as you find more leaf monk effigies, and increasing the stats of your pals in exchange for a load of pal souls. As far as getting as many pal souls as physically possible, the best current way to farm them is to just go around the open world looking for chests. This works best from a flying mount, especially one that is particularly fast or high stamina, as you can just sort of soar above a little bit, look at the ground in large areas, looking to see if there are any chest spawns, because they are random. Each of these chests has a high chance of giving various ranks of pal souls. As far as actually using them then, for each stat that you want to boost, you will need to spend 10 small pal souls, then 6 medium pal souls, and then 6 large pal souls to max it out completely. Each stat can be increased by 30% individually, so fully maxing this out, all 4 of them for a pal takes 40 small souls, 24 medium, and 24 large. But obviously, 9 times out of 10, you don't need both the combat stats and the work speed, so you only really need 3 out of 4 for each pal at most. At this point, just to sum things up, we have 60% attack boost from the passive skills, we can go up to 80% as I showed you before, as well as 30% further multiplicative bonuses from this here now too. So even just on attack alone, we are getting some massive bonuses here and we aren't quite done yet. The final thing to talk about today then is the Pal Essence Condenser. This item unlocks on the tech tree at level 14 for ancient technology points, and it's this massive vat creation. When you use this, it opens up your pal box and you choose the pal that you want to boost. So again, let's choose the one that we've been working on this entire time, Freddy the King Paka. After selecting the one that you want to boost, 
You then select the pals that you'll be, uh, let's just say, releasing to the farm upstate to fuel it. You can then see that Freddy has zero out of four stars up here. Each of these stars represents a stage of essence conversion. The first rank costs four other King Paka. The second costs 16 King Paka. The third costs 32 King Paka. And the fourth, a whopping 64 King Paka. Yeah, I know that is slaughtering a small town of all Pakas, but let's talk about what you actually get in return for doing each of these. Each stage of Pal Essence Condensing increases every stat the Pal has by 5% of its base, meaning with four stars, it is a 20% boost over default. On top of that, two things change with condensing as well. The first is the Partner Skill. Partner Skill level raises by one for each star. This increases the effectiveness of the Partner Skill, related to what the skill itself is. King Paka, for example, is a riding mount that also increases player weight limit while in the party with the Partner Skill unlocked. This weight limit increase is only 100 at base, but at four stars, it turns the partner skill up to level five, and the difference is a ridiculous 40%, which is 10% per star rank. Yes, for weight, that might not seem like a crazy amount, but this 10% increase per partner skill level seems to be consistent regardless of which pallet is. Consider how that could apply to things like Grizzbolt's minigun, which is pure damage, the travel speed of a pure riding mount, or for base work, something like the effectiveness of sticking a mozzarella in your farm to generate milk, as its partner skill itself is what defines how much milk it produces, which means a condensed mozzarella will produce about 40% more milk than a non one. And so you can see quite clearly that the effect of this could have depending on which palette is applied to. On top of that, certain pals also gain levels of their work suitability skills when condensed, not all of them and not in any consistent way that I could lay out for you, but you can make even weaker pals, much more effective base workers through this process as well. So yes, while this is a much longer term goal as catching over 120 of the same species of pal is quite the undertaking and isn't even something you can do for farming XP, like we talked about earlier because again that is capped out at 10 of each species so this is generally i would say the final stage of pal upgrading into the perfect totally optimized creature in a way that can make even a lovely little king paka actually scale up to be the same as an alpha world boss legendary if you really want to and that just about does it for today then essentially just a full guide as to how to make an individual species of pal its absolute best from top to bottom so whether you want to run around with a lamb ball of death or just find the way to actually min max the hell out of a frost to experience true devastation, you now know every step involved in actually doing so. Some of them are more valuable time and effort to results, but if you want the maximum increases, all of these different steps are important to at least be aware of, and of course to follow if you want to. And of course, I used King Paka as my personal example, but all of these are just general principles that apply to every pal in the game, and most of them affect not only combat, but also base work in some way too. I hope you've all enjoyed this end, and hopefully it helps you out along your journey to crafting the perfect team to run alongside you. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more and most importantly ladies and gentlemen until next time stay sweet Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye